Reading the Landscape of Europe by May Thielgard Watts is a thought-provoking essay that explores the intricate relationship between nature and culture across the European landscape. In her essay, Watts delves into the notion that the landscape is a repository of history, culture, and ecology. By skillfully weaving together vivid descriptions, historical insights, and ecological observations, she invites readers to contemplate the deeper meanings embedded in the European landscape. Watts begins her essay by drawing attention to the striking visual contrast between the landscapes of Europe and North America. She highlights the distinctiveness of European landscapes, where cultivated fields and quaint villages seamlessly merge with wilderness. This seamless coexistence of nature and culture forms the basis of her exploration. Watts argues that these landscapes are not only visually captivating but also carry the weight of history and the essence of European culture. The author's eloquent prose brings these landscapes to life, painting pictures of rolling hills, medieval castles, and meandering rivers. Her descriptions evoke a sense of timelessness, where the past and present coalesce in a single glance. Watts' writing is laden with sensory imagery, enabling readers to feel the gentle breeze and hear the rustling leaves as they traverse these landscapes with her words. Watts emphasizes the interconnectedness of European culture and the land. She elaborates on the idea that culture is not imposed upon the landscape but, rather, it emerges from the land itself. She describes how generations of Europeans have shaped their environment through agriculture, architecture, and settlement patterns. Watts underscores the importance of understanding the reciprocal relationship between culture and nature, emphasizing that each has molded the other. One of the recurring themes in the essay is the concept of the cultural landscape. Watts introduces this term to describe how the European landscape has been shaped by human activity, echoing the sentiments of cultural geographers who emphasize the dynamic interplay between people and place. She eloquently illustrates how the landscape reflects the history and traditions of the people who have inhabited it for centuries. What skillfully weaves historical anecdotes into her narrative to underscore her points. She takes readers on a journey through time, recounting stories of battles, migrations, and revolutions that have left their mark on the European landscape. These historical interludes serve as windows into the soul of Europe, providing insights into the enduring connections between the land and its people. In addition to history and culture, Watts delves into the ecological aspects of the landscape. She notes the intricate web of life that thrives within these landscapes, with diverse ecosystems coexisting with human activities. She emphasizes the need for conservation and sustainable land use to ensure the preservation of this rich natural heritage. Watts' ecological perspective resonates with the growing global concern for environmental sustainability. Watts' essay is a call to engage with the landscape on a deeper level. She encourages readers to become active participants in the landscape, to read it as they would a book, and to appreciate the beauty and cultural significance of the world around them. In doing so, she suggests, individuals can develop a greater sense of connection to the land and a stronger commitment to its conservation. Reading the Landscape of Europe is a literary journey that transcends the physical boundaries of the European continent. Through her evocative prose and insightful observations, May Thielgard Watts invites readers to contemplate the deep interplay between culture and nature. She paints a vivid portrait of a landscape that is not just an external backdrop but an integral part of European identity and history. Watts' essay serves as a poignant reminder of the significance of understanding, appreciating, and conserving the landscapes we inhabit, wherever they may be.